well hello and uh, again a warm welcome to everyone to yet another episode of history of our standard ten now i'm hoping that every one of you is fine everyone now uh, everyone in your family is doing fine and before uh, anything else i would just uh, make a small request if possible please feed the stray dogs which are roaming on outside because uh, right now their usual food sources are, or the sources from which they used to get their food is uh, not available like the restaurants the hotels and the other food carts so please if possible do feed them uh, do not have to touch them just uh, keep it aside or keep it on the ground somewhere so that they can eat it now coming back to history before that a uh, very good morning a very good afternoon and a very good evening um i will today this uh, chapter the union legislature i will be completing that chapter and uh, most of the parts of the chapter most of the provisions most of the important parts of the chapter have already been covered in the previous uh, lectures so i will just request once again please before uh, moving on to the questions before solving the questions please go back to the uh, or please watch all the videos uh, tot uh, totally or watch the complete videos not only mine you can just watch any videos but please do have a complete idea of the of the whole thing at times we do feel that okay history geography uh, civics these are subjects which can be ignored or which can be you know like uh, these can be done on later but uh, doing these uh, chapters doing history geography civics actually at times helps us in the real life and also in the in later life if we all go for some competitive examinations or uh, some other uh, stream or if we plan to go on uh, pursue streams like history geography these things will come in handy also one more thing please do not just uh, be stuck into two streams that is uh, science and commerce we can explore other streams also that is arts that is uh, having history geography economics because uh, these streams uh, going against the common notion these streams do have or do pay you well if you all any stream or whichever subject you all choose if you are good at it you will be paid well and uh, well i guess payment is not the only or should not be the only uh, reason why you all will be choosing some stream or the other it should be the satisfaction and it should be the interest so if you all uh, do get into history geography civics into these uh, subjects properly you may cultivate an interest and that interest may be greater than the interest of or interest you have in the other subjects so please uh, in this lockdown please get to know what your interests are or where your interests lie moving on a few uh, things or a few small things were left in the chapter that is uh, one is a session of the parliament now what is a session of the parliament actually when we talk of the session of the parliament it uh, what it actually means is that it is the time period in which the members of the parliament they meet so as to transact the business or so as to formulate laws so as to discuss upon laws or so as to make some amendments changes or so as to discuss the situation of the country according to the constitution there should not be a gap of more than 6 months between two successive sessions of the parliament that means uh, the parliament must be having or should have at least two sessions uh, in an entire year in india we have three sessions we have uh, the monsoon session is there there's a budget uh, budget session there's a winter session so there are these three sessions in which the parliamentarians the members of the parliament they meet in so as to transact business of the house and so as to uh, deal with the situation of the country now this is about the parliamentary session now a parliamentary session whenever a new parliamentary session starts it is addressed by the president of india that is called uh, it is called uh, generally as the president's address at the start of every session the president of india reads out uh, the president's address this um, president's address is nothing but the policy document of the government actually it is the government of india which prepares this address for the president and as you all know because the government of india the head of the government is actually the president of india and it is the president of india in the constitution it, it says that it is the president of india in consultation with the prime minister and the council of ministers it is he who makes the laws for the country or who uh, runs the country so it is the president who gives the address and it contains it is the policy paper of the government it tells uh, how the government performed in the previous year and what other things and what other laws legislation the government intends to bring on or how the uh, government wants to 
uh, run the country in the following year. So that is what the president's address contains. After the president gives the address, he actually moves out of the parliament and this president's address is put to vote and this is called the motion of thanks. And this president's this policy and the president's address is put to vote. Now when there is a debate on the president's address, the president will not be uh, present in the parliament so as to take part in the debate or so as to defend whatever he said in the president's address. Why? Because it was not the president's... Uh, it was not the words of the president in the first case. It was not the president who was giving or telling something on his own. It was the government's policy. So the actual government who is responsible for running the government actually it is the prime minister and the council of ministers. So it is the prime minister and the council of ministers who are there so as to defend the president's address, so as to speak for the president's address and so as to uh, convince the other parliamentarians, other members of the parliament to... Uh, actually vote for the president's address and so as to um, go for the president's address and after this president's address is put to a vote and when the motion of uh, thanks is passed then the actual business of the house starts if suppose the motion of thanks is not passed or if the motion of thanks fails to get passed in the parliament what it actually means I guess you all have uh, understood by now it will actually mean that the government is not having the confidence of the house and the opposition parties may after that uh, bring in a no confidence motion but most of the time it is the motion of thanks not most of the times the motion of thanks is always passed next uh, we have the adjournment and the prorogation of the house when we talk of adjournment uh, suppose there's a session is in or a session a parliamentary se a parliamentary session is um, in place and a session is divided into days a session is a period as I said and in that period the parliamentarians or the members of the parliament they will be meeting on days so as to transact business of the house. Now suppose someday there is uh, no quorum. Suppose on the Monday all the parliamentarians are coming and the, there is a lack of quorum. So the speaker may say that for today the house is adjourned or due to some reason due to some act as you may have seen in the Lok Sabha TV or the Rajya Sabha TV or at times in the news channels that there is rookas in the parliament or uh, everyone in the parliament there is um, the parliament uh, in the parliament there is uproar and there is uh, people are shouting the papers are flying here and there the parliamentarians are accusing each other there is chaos in the parliament so they and the house may turn at times unruly and if the speaker so understands that the house is not under control anymore he may or he or she may for that day or for maybe a few days may adjourn the house. Now adjournment is done by the speaker of the Lok Sabha or by the chairman of the Rajya Sabha. What is prorogation of the house? Adjournment wait. Before that adjournment does not mean that the entire session is over. Adjournment actually means that uh, for a day or two or maybe for some specified period the house will not be meeting and after that it will again come into the house or the parliamentarians will be meeting. But when we talk of the prorogation, prorogation can only be done by the president of India. Prorogation actually means that the entire session is ended and the entire session ends and it is done by the president of India. There can be any reason, there can be many reasons and it is the government or the prime minister and the council of ministers which actually and at times the speaker which uh, advise the president to prorogue the house and after the house is prorogued it is only the president which can bring back the house into another session. So this was about prorogation, adjournment, the motion of thanks. Uh, well, I guess you all had understood how the bills or how the bills get passed. What is the difference between an act and a bill? A bill is when a policy paper is first presented. That is actually a draft. And after a bill is, uh, what actually happens? What is the life cycle of a bill? Life cycle of a bill. The first thing is that some member, it may be a private member bill. Uh, a private member bill is any bill which is introduced into the house by uh, any member of the parliament which is not a member of the council of ministers. So any member of the parliament can raise a bill or bring in a bill. It is called a private member bill if that bill is not brought in by any minister. If a bill is brought in by some minister then it becomes a government bill. When that bill is brought into the house the first thing is that the bill will be tabled and the speaker or the chairperson chairman of the house will be accepting the bill and will be tabling the bill. After the bill has been tabled what happens is most of the times at times the bill may be given to a parliamentary committee which may be reading through the bill going through the bill uh, suggesting changes and after that it is brought into the house. 
or if it does if it does not go to some parliamentary committee it goes or it is brought into the house it is tabled in the house and then it is discussed the member who has uh, brought in the bill he will be reading about the bill he will be telling about the bill there will be or if the government who uh, is bringing about a bill then the government will be talking about the bill defending the bill and telling about the nitty gritties of the bill after the government has uh, told about the bill and after the bill has been discussed after changes have been suggested then the bill will be put to a vote suppose the bill was originating in the lok sabha so there will be a vote in the lok sabha if the bill gets passed in the lok sabha then the bill will move to the rajya sabha after the bill goes to the rajya sabha the rajya sabha may appoint some committee to look into the bill or the rajya sabha will be tabling the bill and then then there will be a discussion on the bill over there and the members of the rajya sabha will be discussing the bill will be suggesting changes to the bill after that has been done the members of the rajya sabha or the members of the rajya sabha next will be voting for the bill if the bill gets passed by the members of the rajya sabha also with or without the if the rajya sabha had uh, suggested some changes it goes back to the lok sabha lok sabha can put in those changes or it may not put in those changes and again give it to the rajya sabha it will be put to vote in the rajya sabha if the bill gets passed by the rajya sabha also then the bill moves to the president after the bill has moved to the president the president may withhold his assent give his assent to the bill or may send back the bill to the house so as to uh, reconsider some parts of the bill if the house again sends back the house may reconsider the president's suggestion suggestions and bring in some changes or the house can give back the bill to the president as it was originally and if the bill goes to the president for a second time the president is no longer or the president has no other option but to give his assent or sign to the bill and after the bill has been signed by the president it becomes an act in the case of a money bill what actually happens is the money bill does not or cannot be raised in the rajya sabha it is raised only in the lok sabha and whether a bill is a money bill or a financial bill is decided by the speaker of the lok sabha if a money bill is uh, presented in the lok sabha then the members of the lok sabha will be same uh, similarly in the case of any ordinary bill there will be discussions there will be debate in the lok sabha if it gets passed by the members or if it gets passed in the lok sabha it then moves on to the rajya sabha and over here the rajya sabha is given a uh, time period of 14 days the rajya sabha cannot uh, there is no uh, voting in the rajya sabha or even if the rajya sabha does not or is not able to pass the bill or the bill does not get passed in the rajya sabha it does not matter because in 14 days whether or not the rajya sabha returns back the bill or not it is assumed that the rajya sabha has passed the bill uh, not the has passed the bill and the bill is then present to, present, presented to the president of india and the president of india as is the case in a money bill the president of india cannot withhold his assent he has to give his sign to the money bill and then the money bill becomes an act so this was about the money bill or the normal bill the life cycle of a bill and well this was more or less about the entire union legislature i know it it was a very long chapter and why because this chapter has to be done properly because this chapter actually deals with the proper functioning or the functioning of the country and this is also it is very important to understand this chapter properly because uh, any time in life if you all want to become a parliamentarian you should know about a few things or not only that as a responsible citizen of the country and also as a responsible member of the constitution of india why because it does say we the people of india and the constitution derives its power the government derives its power the executive derives its power from the people of india that is why it is given we the people of india in the preamble so we the people of india so we must know about the constitution we must know about how the uh, country is run and governed that is why it is very important to understand this chapter please uh, go through this chapter properly go through all the videos go through any video in the youtube uh, please uh, subscribe like and comment if you have any problem and well stay well stay happy thank you